Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Fraser, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to use the exec function call or system call uh, in Linux done through a C program. So, in general, what is the exec function call? Well, it allows you to replace the currently running program with a brand new process. So let's have a look at kind of how we can walk that through. Just get us started, I've created a program here called Hello Exec, which when called, it, we passed a number of arguments, it's just going to print out its process ID, known as the PID, the PID, and via this call here to get PID. And then I'm going to print out all of the arguments to the program, and then simply exit. So we can run that, I'll make that first. So I can build it with that command, and then I can run it with uh, hello exec, and let's just run it without any arguments to start with. It'll tell us that my PID is uh, 57 to 2290, and the only argument was actually the name that I used to execute it with. That's a convention we use uh, for our calling a program. So I can put in some other things here, one, two, so those are two arguments, hello, and yo. So we can see that it now gets all the arguments passed to it. So let's use that for exec. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write another program that is going to exec to run this hello exec. So let's start with that. So I'm going to create a new file. This is all inside of Eclipse. Uh, see a previous video for how to set that up. And let's call this exec demo. Let's see. So here it is. We're going to include stdio.h and hash include. Um, I'm going to include stdlib.h as well for some of the uh, functions I could use. So we get vo uh, int main number of arguments and then an array of argv, a vector of arguments for the actual characters. So uh, return. It's good. So what we're going to want to do here is call that other program. So to do so, I want to um, use the exec system call. So we're going to use exec uh, vp is the system call I'm going to use. Let's have a look at what that does. So I can do man exec and it gives me the entire family of the exec system calls. Now as it turns out, there's only one real system call here, and all of these functions are just sort of wrappers that end up calling into it. And we can see what each of them does for us. To begin with, let's just start using this one that's going to do what I need, and then we'll come back and talk about what it is, the difference between these ones. So let's set this up. I need to pass in to this function. If I look over here, I pass in the path, which is to say whatever it is I wish to execute and then a series of arguments. So the path is simply going to, well, I'm going to do this in a more simple way. So I need to come up with the arguments first. So it's a uh, an array of character pointers, so args. And in this array, it's got a few properties. The first thing is it's null terminated. So at the very end, I need a null. That tells it when to stop. Now the first argument is, by convention, the name of the function, or the, pardon me, the name of the process that we're calling, or the file on disk. So we're going to run uh, hello exec is the thing we're going to run, and then let's pass in something like hello and, well, let's go with world as my two arguments. So now I can call exec p. I could put it in, for example, with hello exec is what I wish to execute, and then I pass in args. And so all this is going to do is execute that other program. STDIO. And we'll build that. So this is a very simple program that's simply going to run another program. So if I look on disk, ah, oh, yeah, I'm not yet building that, so I've got to go into my make file. And I'm going to add exec demo to the list of targets that I'm building as per my make file. Okay, let's go back and have a look at this. I'll build. Going fine, except here we got a problem. Implicit declaration of exec vp. 
Okay, let's go back to our man file, man exec, and it tells me here this is in std, uh, pardon me, uni std. So I've selected that, I'll middle click and it'll paste it in for me. Rebuild, now we're fine. So here are my programs. If I run just exec demo, nothing happens. Hmm. So let's figure out what happened here. If I ran my exec demo, it comes through, it runs my code here. It goes looking for my hello exec, and then it didn't actually do anything for me. So let's try dot slash hello exec. There we go. And I'll just for completeness update this. So the issue there was if I don't specify the dot slash, then Linux is going to start looking in uh, the sort of the normal path for where to find this. Well, it turns out in Linux, the current folder is not in the path. That's to prevent you from accidentally running a Trojan virus or something that was named ls. So here, I need to specify that I'm interested in running hello exec in the current path. So previously it was returning an error message I wasn't catching. But we can see it looks like we ran hello exec just when we tired, started to run exec demo. And it did that because the first thing we do is replace ourselves with someone else. So let's put in some code that actually shows that we're running some of this code here. So I'm going to printf exec demo and my PID is, and we'll print it out here, and then I can call get PID. So let's build that and rerun. So here in exec demo, my PID is 57475, and then exec C, when I've actually ran hello exec down here, my other program, it maintains the same PID. So what has happened is on the command line when I execute exec demo, that spawns a new process and Linux gives that process, well in this case it was uh, 57475. When I call exec, I simply replace the currently running process with a new image as it were. So it swaps out my exec demo with hello exec. So that's the whole purpose of the exec system call. Now, we can ask what happens after this. So let me go down here. Uh, farewell, cruel world. Let's rerun this, rebuild. Oops. Cruel world. Make, oops, make, and then we'll rerun exec demo. But we never saw that. We could ask why. Why did we never see this? Well, exec never returns unless there's an error. This is the last function my program is going to execute because as soon as it does this, it replaces everything that's in my currently running image, the memory space, the code, the variables, everything gets replaced by the program that I'm now trying to run, which is my hello exec. One little shorthand here I want to show you is that we have hello exec listed twice. It's both argument zero here, and I have to pass it in as the first argument here. So I can just simplify my life and say I want to do args sub zero and args. So it'll be exactly the same as before, exactly the same behavior. Okay, so that's the basics there. Let's look at the different execs that we can execute. So if we go back here to man exec, we see that there's quite a family of them. Note that they all start with exec and they either have an L, as here the first three have L's in them, and the second three have P, uh, V's pardon me, in them. I've chosen to use the V one, so let me just write here in a comment what we've got just so everyone can see it. So with an L, it means that we're going to do comma, comma separated arguments, and if I do it with a V, it's a vector. i.e. an array of strings. So as I pass in the arguments, if I did a v, here I'm passing in an array of strings. 
If I wanted to use exec l, for example, then I would pass in something like exec l args sub zero and hello world. This you might use if you wanted to um, pass in values directly. I like to use the array because it allows me to create these arrays programmatically, so my code can actually generate the array for me. And the other thing to mention is when you start to look at the p, so with a p, a few of these have a p, these last two here, and this one. So the p is for path. Uh, include normal search path for executable. That means that if it's somewhere in, say, slash user slash or slash bin, um, it will automatically search for the appropriate locations. This allows you to run, say, things like ls and so forth. If you know it's going to be in the current folder, you can get rid of the p, so I could just run exec, and it'll work the same way. So that's a brief introduction as to the differences between the exec uh, calls. Okay, so now let's start to actually show what goes on with exec. There's some subtle things here that we might have be able to overlook. I mentioned that we replaced the current memory space. So let's create a global variable here. I'm going to call it uh, int fav num equals 42. And I'm going to copy that, go into my hello up here, and I'm going to put in the same variable, but let's change the number here. Let's say 84. And then on the first line, I'm going to print out fav num is percent d fav num. So now whenever I run, let's get out of this, make hello exec, it's going to print out its favorite number. But now the question is, what happens between these? If I have a favorite number here, and then I exec, does that carry forward? So if I now run exec demo, the answer is no, it doesn't carry forward, because my favorite number from my exec, my parent or my initial image, gets completely wiped out when I do the exec. It doesn't matter what I do in here, in fact, all variables will get wiped out. I can create a local int fav num equals 152, it just doesn't matter. I could then, before I go through and update this, I can say fav num, which is going to be my local variable, increment it, no, that's going to matter. Of course, this is bad style. I've got the same variable name twice. But when I exec, I keep getting the same 84. So there's nothing I can do in my memory space that's going to pass through. So those are all unique values in the different areas. Now, we could ask, well, what about if I wanted to return a value? Could not my hello exec return a value back to exec demo? Well, the answer is I can't, because exec demo no longer exists. It ran, and while running, it decided to replace itself with another image from disk. And when it did so, it ceased to exist. Sure, the process ID continued, which is to say Linux, the way it tracks it, continued to exist, but the actual code, the memory space, is gone. There's nothing to return to. So down here in my hello version, when it returns, this does not go back to exec demo. This return actually kills the process. It kills that whole process that Linux had open. If you're thinking about returning a value, it would return back to whatever process forked this process. But that's in a separate tutorial. OK, so one last thing I wanted to show is what would happen if we exec ourself? So let's break a new new file and try that. So let's call this one uh, selfexec.c. The folder, we want to put it into here. File name, selfexec. And I'm going to go and I'm going to copy my exec demo. And we'll start with this. Add it to my make. So here, if I changed this to self exec, well, we're going to get down to here. We're going to say replace me with 
myself, and then go from there. So you might be thinking, well, okay, we'll replace me with me, that's the same as me, and so we'll carry on to here. That's not going to be quite what happens. Um, what, sorry, fave num plus plus, ah, uh, right. And let me go back into exact demo and get rid of that fave num plus plus. Build that. There we go. So now if I do self exec, we get an infinite loop. Now we're not looping. There's no for loop here. In fact, we've got the same PID, even though my PID stays the same. But we are continuously replacing ourself with another copy of ourself. We never ever hit our farewell cruel world because by the time we hit the exec command, we replace the current running image with a new image. It starts at main, just like a brand new program, and starts to execute down the line. Now I can do some kind of cool things with this. Let's get rid of some of these comments here. I can pass myself a value. Now how do I get information into that new program that's running? Well, I use the command line. And so what I can do is I can pass myself some information on the command line. So let's do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a program that's going to count down. So let's change this comment here to be what we are. We're exec uh, self exec. I can check to make sure I've got the right number of arguments. So if arg c is less than is not equal to uh, two. I can printf uh, pass one argument as an integer. It's always a good idea to check the count here before I access the array, otherwise I might be accessing an invalid area of the array for the arguments. And then exit 1. So let's get that number, int n equals a to i. I can convert from ASCII to integer and I'm going to do argv sub 1. So that's going to give me the first argument. Pass the name, but the real argument. So let's do printf, uh, print the number, and I'm going to put a line feed here. I might not want to put a line feed normally, but as it turns out the line feed is going to flush the buffer uh, to the screen and I'll actually see this, otherwise the buffer can get clobbered for standard out. Um, and I'll print the number here. If you didn't want to put the uh, slash n, you might want to do a flush with an f flush to flush the file. Um, that's just FYI. Okay, so now if we're in this sort of recursion, let's make sure we bottom out the recursion. So if n does not equal zero, we're actually going to recurse. And here, if I'm going to recurse, I need to pass some value in. So let's create a new. Um, I need to create the argument that I'm going to pass in. In order for me to do that, I need to create a string. So char uh, n minus 1. And let's make it a string length 10. I need to get n minus 1 into that string, so I'm going to do sprintf to write it into a string. So that's n minus 1. I'm going to write it in with a percent d. And that is n minus 1. So that builds my string. Now I can do this in a number of ways. I can actually switch here from v to l just to demonstrate what it is. So we're going to call ourselves. So let's just do arg v sub zero. So what am I using? I'm accessing this one up here. I'm going to then pass in n minus one, and let's check the man page just for fun. Man exec, and it'll tell us here. Um, the exec L and uh, so forth can be thought of as arguments. List of arguments must be terminated by a null pointer. Right. So we'll pass in a null at the end here, which indicates that we are done. We only wanted to pass those first two in. And now let's run this. Let's think about what's going to happen when I do run it. It's going to come in, print out our own PID. If I don't have enough arguments, it quits. Otherwise, it prints the argument it was given. I then 
generate a string that is the argument minus one, so n minus one, and I pass that in to myself. How do I know it's myself? Because I used argv sub zero. Argv is what I was passed, and sub zero is my name on the file system. So let's try that. Make. I'll pass in no arguments, and it tells me I should pass in a number. Let's pass in the number two just to start with. It prints out two. And then it says pass one argument as an integer. OK, so we failed to pass in the value there. Let's go back and check out why. So I created n minus 1 as my argument. I called exec l. Let's print it out to see what we got. So arg to pass, percent s, line feed it, and n minus 1. arg to pass is a 1, and pass in one argument as an integer. Hmm. That's curious. Well, I'm not really sure why that's not working. Let me comment that out for a moment. Let's switch over to using the one that I have been using already. Let's create an, the argument array. So I'm going to create an array called args. I don't need to give it the size because it's going to automatically take the appropriate size. I want to pass in to begin with arg v sub zero. Oh, I know why. Yeah, just occurred to me. This is the name that's going to get executed. I then need to pass in its name on the file system. So these are the arguments. And this is simply what I'm calling. Let's try that again. So self, you know, pass in a 1. So that's good. It counted from 1 down. And let's pass in a 3. So now we can see what happens as I go from 3 to 2 to 1 to 0. Each time I am re-executing the code, we can see here we print out the very first line. Self exec, we print out the PID. It's always the same PID. So I can then count down. So you can imagine what happens when I call 100. Only one process is ever created. And that process continuously executes new processes. In fact, all that's actually changing is we're changing the argument when we call ourselves. Now you can say, well, what happens if I have a global variable here? Let's call this int height equals 52, 51. Each time I'm going to print out printf uh, height percent d and height. And just for fun, I'm going to decrement height here, H-E-I, height. We'll decrement it here. So if it gets wiped out every time, we're going to see 51s the entire way through. On the other hand, if it stays around behind, we're going to see that it counts down with us. We make self-exec. Oops, let's try passing in some number. Let's pass in 10. And we can see that it stays 51 every time. Well, in fact, it's not really staying 51. It goes from 51 down to 50 with this height minus minus. When we get down here to exec, we exec a complete new copy. The entire thing gets reloaded. A brand new program starts running in the same place. And height gets initialized to 51. So it wipes out absolutely everything associated with the process, with the exception, I believe, of maybe open files and a few other small little details. OK, so that's all I wanted to show here. The main part is to understand that exec will wipe out the current process and load a new process in its place. And we've got a number of ways of interacting with that, but it's pretty much just the command line we can use. We could pass anything we like on the command line, maybe a handle to a pipe or something. But generally, all we've got is coming in through here. Everything else we had, like the global variables, are all wiped out as we execute it. Thank you for watching.